Brothers and sisters, welcome to our 33 Days to Eucharistic Glory. This is our weekly program where we are going to be having great discussions around the Eucharist, getting excited <laughs> to know Jesus in the Eucharist and to hear about how the ways the Lord has worked in so many people's lives. So joining me on set today is Anika Johnson. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Anika. Very welcome to join us. Thank Anika you. is a lay consecrated member of the Living Water mm -hmm. community. And right before the show, we were just kind of ramaging a bit about a few of our own experiences together uh, with the Lord. And uh, I met Anika years ago before I even became a Dominican priest. And, uh, 12 years to go, to be more precise. 12 years. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> 12 years. <laughs> and and uh, Anika has shared with me her story 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it always stayed with me, and I've used it to share with others over time. So I thought... It would be great to have Anika on the show with us Thanks, and man. to speak a little bit about that. And actually, she was rem reminding me that when I was, you know, on a come and see weekend with the Living Water community, Anika was there as well. Mm -hmm. And we, you want to say a little bit about what, what we were planning yeah. to do? <laughs> so we were both sharing about our, um, our love of Jesus and the Eucharist. And I remember at that time, you know, we were on Facebook a lot. And this just to see that desire to be digital evangelists. So we opened a little Facebook page together. We got a picture of a priest holding um, the Eucharist. And on it, we put, I am alive. And it was the aim of bringing people to love of Jesus in the Eucharist. We had these dreams. Well, there you go. And now them. we've come like full <laughs> circle. And she was just reminding yeah. me of that, you know. So yeah. praise the Lord. I am alive. And that's the message, you know. Yeah. This is our Catholic faith, based on Jesus' words. I am the bread of life. Amen. And we know that Jesus rose from the dead and that he leaves us this amazing way of having a personal contact with himself while he's in heaven. As scripture says, seated at the right side of the Father with all the saints and angels, our blessed mother, mm -hmm. to have a personal contact with each one of us. So I really want to just open up this space really for Anika to share a little bit about her testimony about Jesus in the Eucharist. And then we have some other great guests coming into the show. So <laughs> you're just going to have to wait to find out who they are. So Anika, please Thanks. tell us a little bit about your journey with the Eucharist sure. and your faith. Sure. Thanks, Father Jesse. And thank you, everyone, for just listening. Um, I became Catholic when I was 19 years old. I was leaving Holy Name Convent. Prior to that, I was baptized Methodist, and my Christian formation happened within Pentecostal settings, evangelical settings. It was actually at 15 I had my first encounter with God, God the Father, experiencing His love. But at that time, too, I still wanted to know how to serve God in fullness. There was just his passion, not to know a step by step, but just knowing that there must be more. I went to Catholic schools all my life, primary and secondary. And in Holy Name Convent, my secondary school, the Blessed Sacrament was always exposed in the chapel throughout the day for us girls to go and adore. Those of us who were Catholic or believed that Jesus was present there. From my um, in my Protestant formation, I was made to believe um, that, that could, that's idol worship. That, that's just a host, a wafer. Hmm. And I, I used to say that. I, I found some tracks, some little booklets, and it spoke about that not being right. Mm -hmm. And I felt mm -hmm. that actually in my arrogance, in my youth, that God had put me in a Catholic school to kind of bring people out of that behavior. Mm -hmm. But I was always curious, and a day I was passing the chapel, I believe I was in Form 5, and the Blessed Sacrament was exposed, and no one was in the chapel. In my criticism, I said, these worthless Catholics, I thought you're not supposed to leave Jesus all alone. But I was curious. And when I went in, I sat at the back of the chapel opposite where the Blessed Sacrament was exposed, and I said, Jesus, you know, I have nothing to lose. If you are present here, I want an experience of you. Show me that you are here. Hmm. After a few moments, this tremendous peace was there. And I was just kind of speaking very freely with the Lord. Even though I had my encounter when I was 15, I was a little older. Still prayer was difficult, but in that moment I was conversing. I left the chapel. I shared it with my friend who's Catholic, and she was so excited, over the moon. She's like, peace from the Eucharist, that is definitely Jesus. I said to her, God, I have to come better than that because I'm looking <laughs> for fireworks. <laughs> I am looking for thunder. 
but it wasn't so. Um, about two or three weeks later, there was a group in school called the Missionaries of the Sacred Hearts, and they mm. were having a, um, a retreat on Mount St. Benedict, a Catholic group. But once there was Jesus involved, I would go. I, would be, I had this ability to just separate all that I didn't like, mm. the Mary talk, blah, blah, blah. The, you know, I would put that aside. But my friends were going, friends that I loved and trusted, and I wanted to be a part of that. So the retreat was from Friday to Sunday. Sunday, we heard that we were going down to Chaplain C and UE to have a time before the Blessed Sacrament. And I was hesitant. I said, you know, I can't do this. This is just everything. Again. I just feel like it's mm. so wrong. But again, I just felt curious and, and just being pulled and drawn to that moment. So I said, okay, God, I'm going into this room. I am pushing aside all my preconceived notions, everything that I think, and let me just try to be open. So in that space, there was worship. Um, I was also charismatic gifts being um, exercised. Um, there was a teacher there who knew a little bit about my journey and she was um, operating in the gift of word of knowledge and word of wisdom. And for each of us, she was saying something. When she came to me, she said, Anika, Jesus wants you to know that he is here and he knows your questions. He is here. That peace was also mm. And I just could not deny it at that point. I just had to surrender. When I returned to school in the following weeks, I, I just got closer to where Jesus was exposed on the altar. And I used to sit at the steps, um, look up at the altar, and just be bearing my heart before the Lord. I think it's an adoration that I learned how to pray. Mm. I realized too that I wanted more of this Lord. You know, scripture says that if you eat my body and drink my blood, you will live in me and I live in you. Mm. I wanted more of this Jesus. So it was Eucharist that drew me to the church. Mm. Eucharist that helped me to get over things like obstacles like Mary, um, like saints, mm -hmm. of course, being in, um, going through RCIA, etc. But Eucharist is where my songwriting starts. So I songwriting started. So I learned how to express myself more. But I fell in love with this Jesus who was present there. And to this day, mm. I thank God that I know there's a space that I can go mm. when in crisis and even when mm. things are going well, mm -hmm. that I know Jesus is present there. And when I struggle, at every Mass, this is a practice I've had since 2006 when I became Catholic. At the, at the consecration, my words are, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Mm. Because I know it is still a miracle happening here that is beyond us. Yeah, no, that's, it's amazing. You said a few things there that kind of, first of all, like where you said, even your songwriting with mm -hmm. in front of the Lord, because one of the things that, that I'm passionate about conveying is just how much Jesus speaks to us mm -hmm. in adoration when he's exposed, mm -hmm. just like in the gospels, when we're mm -hmm. with Jesus, he sends the Holy Spirit from his Eucharistic heart into our mind and heart inspires us, mm -hmm. speaks to our heart. One of the things too you said about, you know, eating the body and blood yep. of Christ and, and living in Christ. I was, it just came to my mind, and um, this amazing uh, evangelical Protestant um, lady called Heidi Baker, mm -hmm. who I have great respect for. She has a great mission in Mozambique. And she's very Catholic in her perspective in many ways, but one day she was giving out a talk, you know. She said, Jesus, I love you so much. You're so incredible. I wish I could eat you. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, that, that, that's so Catholic. That, that yeah. is it. That, that's just, this yeah. is the desire of the human heart. This yeah. is why God left us the Eucharist as the bread of life in the way because it's a sacrament of intimacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That he knows that it's not enough. That we, we have this like desire to be consumed in him and with him. And it just speaks Amen. to that moment of what you said. Amen. Um, but amazing how the Lord drew you, Anika, to himself. Yep. And he wanted to show you yep. his face yep. in this incredible way. Because, you know, brothers and sisters, at the heart of our Catholic faith is this belief, right? That we don't believe that the bread and wine after Mass are just special um, containers of God's presence or that they're just symbols. No, we believe that the bread and wine become God, mm -hmm. which is a miracle. Mm -hmm. Every time we witness at Mass, through the mere hands of the priests and uh, the voice of the priests, and then all of us as a priestly people baptized in, in our Catholic faith, we get to offer this worship of, mm -hmm. of the Eucharist as well, Amen. all together with Jesus. But so that, Something you said there too about 
how in your times where you feel a bit lost or because we all have Amen. moments of feeling yeah. a bit lost and sometimes we're not good enough to admit that to each other and to others um, but how is it how has it been for you to go to be in front of Jesus in those moments yeah you know I said that at the beginning of my journey coming to the church um, in adoration I, I learned where to bear my heart to God and I watch that as, as me talking a lot, me giving a lot. In my moments of crisis, like when I struggle with anxiety, I've learned that it's in stillness and allowing God to pour into me. Mm -hmm. And adoration is that space. I, I, I'm growing in the, um, the practice of Christian medita meditation, but it, when it is before Jesus and allowing him to love me, mm. allowing him to, to heal me, allowing him to watch me with a non-judgmental gaze, Mm -hmm. I feel that freedom mm -hmm. and it's lessening my words, mm -hmm. but just allowing Jesus to do what only he can mm -hmm. do. And so many persons will tell you that, you know, and psychologists, etc., cetera, that um, the remedy for the anxiety, the depression, etc., cetera, is not doing more, but it's mm -hmm. being still. Mm -hmm. But I'm not just being still before nothing, but being still mm -hmm. before a person. Mm -hmm. So Amen. that's, you know, that, that really can I even just share how, how Jesus wanted to sow? When I told you that peace was my first encounter, that host um, that was present in that time when I was first coming to believe that Jesus was mm. there, you know, there are inscriptions on the host sometimes mm. like IHS. Yes. It can be a lamb. When I got close to that host as I, those weeks went on, mm. peace was the word written across. I remember that. Yes. Yes, and when, and, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when I met um, sis, Sister Anne from Rosary Monastery, Sister Anne Bradshaw, mm. she's, I, I told her about that because they make the hosts, right, in, mm. in, in Rosary Monastery. And she said, yes, around that time, we would have been doing patterns like that. Mm. You know, so God was so, he just wanted to show me, girl, I'm here. And that's it, you know, mm -hmm. like, that's why this 33-day journey is so important because Jesus is the prince of peace Amen. and peace means nothing is missing mm. and ultimately mm. it's in heaven please God that we reach heaven that there's that fullness of peace that there's nothing missing Anika just we're going to come back to you in a bit because we always have Got lots to talk, to talk about to. <laughs> but we have another surprise yeah. guest coming on with us and uh, so his name is Kyle Langan um, so Kyle are you with us now welcome Kyle to our 33 days to Eucharistic glory and okay. Kyle is a native of Chicago, the Chicago area. And Kyle has been on an amazing journey with the Lord. He has a heart for, for contemplation, for prayer. Um, we had a conversation a couple of months ago and where you're, his heart was on fire and he was saying, I want every cell of my body to be given to the worship of God. And uh, Kyle at the moment is a member of the Apostoli, Apostoli VA community, which is uh, throughout the world, which is a community that focuses on uh, really calling us all to the contemplative vocation that the whole church is called to, the, the, and to the call to holiness, to be saints, but especially to, to, to a life given over to seeking the mystical and contemplative life of, of the Christian life. And uh, so Kyle's also very much involved with the Avil Institute, which is a, a really beautiful institute that provides a lot of this formation for, for, for everyone um, for, <laughs> to, to dive deep into the mystical, rich tradition of, of especially the Carmelite tradition and, and so many beautiful teachings of the saints on the spiritual life. Anyway, I'm, I'm talking too much. So Kyle, <laughs> welcome to the program. And Kyle's a, a man who wears many hats. But Kyle, welcome. And you know, what does the Eucharist mean for you? And, and how has that played in your life or, or someone else's life that you have witnessed how Jesus the Eucharist has really left an impact on them? Well, first, thanks. Thanks for having me on, Father. It's always good to be with you and talk about the Eucharist, something that we talk about often together. So. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so as I was preparing for this, uh, the first thing actually that I wanted to share was a story of where it all began for me, actually. Oh, praise God. And um, so I'm a cradle Catholic, like Father Jesse said, I'm, I'm from the Chicago area. And my parents, um, they're, they're very passionate about their faith also. 
And so growing up, actually, there was never a day that I never saw them go to not go to daily mass. So my whole life, I just grew up with the my parents' witness of them going to mass every single day, which really had a powerful impact on me. Um, but one day I was, I had just received my first communion. I was about eight years old. And I was at a Sunday mass and the simplicity of a child's heart, I think, really opened me up and you know like as a child you just you wonder and you want to know the mysteries of why things are the way that they are and all that right and so i'm sitting there in mass and um and the reading that that particular sunday was the calling of samuel so samuel in the scripture is a young boy and his mother took him to the temple and she dedicated him to the Lord. And as I'm listening to this story unfold, I'm thinking, hmm, that sounds kind of like me, you know? Like, I'm a little boy, I, I kind of wanna, I just always felt drawn to be with the Lord and be in the temple with the Lord. And, and so um, he's sitting there in the temple, he's, and he hears this voice calling his name, Samuel, Samuel. So he gets up in the middle of the night and he goes to the master and he says, master, you called me. Um, and the master says, no, I didn't call you, go back to sleep. So, and this happens three times. And after the third time, when Samuel was speaking with the master, the master says, oh, he realizes, okay, the Lord is calling you. So if you hear someone call your name again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So he goes back to bed and uh, he hears his name called again. So he says, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And then this dialogue, this beautiful dialogue unfolds between Samuel and the Lord. And um, as a young boy, that story captured my imagination and I thought wow I want to hear the Lord speak to me Amen. and so I turned it into a prayer and I said Lord I want you to speak to me the same way that you spoke to or like you spoke to, to Samuel and so that day when I went up to receive communion uh, after I received I came back to my pew and I knelt down and it's hard for me to describe what happened, but it, it was it was like this love just washed over me. Mm. Um, and um, let me see if I can kind of re-enter the moment. Like I could feel my heart burning with love. And I remember as a young boy, just tears started to flow, hmm. which as an eight year old boy, I don't know, like it was just a mysterious moment. I knew that I was meeting God. Really, that's what it comes down to. Hmm. I knew I was meeting God. And what he was saying to me was, um, he, well, he was sharing actually what he was doing. He was sharing his love with me, that the same love that he has for his people because like as other people were going up to receive communion i i felt a burning passionate love for all those other people that were right. that were going up and i was just like i was totally um surprised by this encounter with the lord um and so again uh, this, I think, was the beginning of my journey with the Eucharistic Lord and and something that I'm still reflecting on and, and continue to learn from this is the importance of being like a child in his presence mm -hmm. and and speaking with him like a child and trusting in him like a child and and those kinds of things. So 
That's really beautiful, Kyle. Thank you so much. And that, that posture is a prayer that, of your heart there with the Lord from Samuel. Is it something that we could bring in to our time of Eucharistic adoration or when we go to the Mass? Because, as you know, we believe that when the readings are proclaimed in the Mass, it's the living Word being proclaimed by the power of the Holy Spirit to us. So to say, Lord, I'm here. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You know, it's one of the great challenges for us to come from the, the noise of the world into Mass, to really listen. And it reminds me of something Pope Benedict says, quoting, I think, St. Jerome. He says, like, just as we are so careful for every fragment of the Holy Eucharist, you know, in, on, in the altar, and, and when we receive on our hand to, to, to gather every fragment, that we have to gather every fragment, too, of the Word when announced in the Mass, you know, to be so attentive to God's words. I'm um, mm -hmm. really grateful for you coming on today and sharing with us. And that experience speaks to me of what the Church teaches in the Catechism about one of the fruits of the Holy Eucharist, is transformation in Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and Christ gave you that deep share at your first Holy Communion in His heart and how He loves His people mm -hmm. and how He wants to give His life away for His people. Kyle, thank you so much. We, okay. We're going to have to invite another guest on. Thank you so much <laughs> for your you. time uh, to be with us. And, and the reason why we, I invited Kyle as well, he's, Kyle's from the States, is to remind us that our journey is, is linked to, this ho to the whole Catholic Church. And that, that our relationship with Christ, it's so good to see people remind you when people are outside of your own country, mm -hmm. reminds you about how much the Lord's at work in every land and a nation and and, and to open up our minds to, to where the Lord is working mm -hmm. and how we belong to something much bigger, uh, where, where the Catholic Church, the Universal Church, the Church Christ founded. So praise, praise the Lord, Kyle. Um, thank you so much. Great to be with you. Real pleasure. And I'm praying for your country as you guys do this consecration. What a beautiful opportunity. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Brothers and sisters, our next guest that we're inviting in to the show is uh, a very dear and beautiful lady from our land. Her name is Lisa Perez. And Lisa is a professor, a teacher, and uh, she is, a, more importantly, if I could say that, a, a warrior for Jesus, a <laughs> lover of Jesus, and a love of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. And I, I've gone to know Lisa over the last couple of years, and again, um, that's been a privilege and a joy for me. So, Lisa, welcome to our show. And uh, Lisa was sharing with me a story the other day that really touched my heart, and I thought, you know what, I want everybody to hear this story as well, just like Anika's story, Kyle's story. So, Lisa, tell me yes, a little bit about, you. well, first of all, welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. And. Um, Share with us a little bit about that story you told me about when you would come in from the East early in the morning. And yes. uh, if you can just say about something about that with us would be great. Next couple sure. of minutes. So, as I reflected, uh, I remembered why I loved the Eucharist so much is because of the Life in the Spirit Seminar. And I realized after doing the Life in the Spirit Seminar, I had a deep desire for the Eucharist and adoration. So I was blessed to work at FEO. I think it might have been in 2014, right? a little earlier. And you know that Living Waters is a little way down from FEO. And every morning when I live in the East, so I was telling Father Jesse, I will come down early, get a park. And before I go to work, I will go before the Blessed Sacrament, spend some time with Jesus. And on lunchtime, for lunchtime Mass, I would go to lunchtime mass and then go back to work. And that year of doing that was very transforming for me. You know, I received a lot of graces. And uh, as I think it's um, St. Teresa says, you, she gazes at him and he gazes back at you. And you really believe that. And you feel the love of God, the love of Jesus in that way. And that um yeah was very instrumental i think in my walk in my christian walk with the lord and very transforming and i try not to miss adoration i try to go once a week and as you know at time permits to go because it's so important and what you realize is that jesus 
wants to know about you, your everyday life. And so, as Anika said, and as Kyle said, sometimes you go and you just pour your heart out. But sometimes I just go and I sit. I said, Lord, here I am. Your daughter is here. And most times I sleep. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and it's the best rest. Uh, and, um, no, I sleep. You know, you, you, you start to pour your heart out. You just sit in silence. And the next thing you realize you're nodding and you're in a deep sleep. So, you know, but the, um, I encourage everyone, the experience Experiencing Jesus is really that food for the journey. That that adoration is really food for the journey. Receiving the Eucharist is really food for the journey. Yeah. And it is our daily journey. You know, and God is yeah. with us. Jesus is with yeah. us in our daily journey. Amen. And that is what adoration is to me. Amen. That reminds me of the prophet Elijah when the angel came to him after he was being tempted to a bit of despair with the Jezebel coming after him and he, this great prophet fled. And the angel came and there was, there was all this bread in the, the jar. And the angel touched him and said, take, eat, because the journey is too great for you. Mm -hmm. And so the journey is too great for us. Mm -hmm. It's a great journey to get to heaven. It's, it's, a, it's a profound journey. It's, we need the bread of life. And Jesus said that we need the Eucharist. We need this heavenly bread. That, that we see in the desert, which was a prophecy, the manna that came from heaven in the Exodus, the manna throughout that whole journey of the people to the promised land, that, that food for them to reach the promised land was a prophecy for the pilgrimage of the church. Mm -hmm. When the time came, the fullness of time came, that bread from heaven truly came down and it was God himself. And he wanted to become the people's very food. Lisa, thank you so much. And uh, I'm just going to wrap up a few minutes here with Anika. Bless you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for, thank you. Uh, for that testimony, how Jesus transformed you in that year. And there were a lot of personal things you shared with me. We don't have to share here. But the point is, you got strength from Jesus in the Eucharist to overcome. And uh, he empowered you. Bless you. Amen. Anika, just, we have only a few minutes left on this show. Um, is there a saint that comes to mind when, when we're talking about anything that we spoke mm -hmm. about in our discussions or about our theme on the Eucharist that, that maybe the Lord might have put on your heart that you want to just... Sure. It's easy because my favorite saint is Saint Therese. Mm. And because of her, her, her love of the little we. Um, and she, she was too, was touched that Christ will come in ordinary bread and wine. Mm. And... As a convert, you know, sometimes when I, because of my lay consecrated life, um, I have the privilege sometimes to, to bring Jesus and put him into the monstrance. And there are moments when I'm overwhelmed, whether it's at my chapel at home or our, um, here at the, the center, Living Water Community, that, my God, I am holding the King of Kings within my hands. But I'll be open to that. I sometimes, because I am at Mass almost da oh, daily, can take for granted that a mm. miracle is here. Mm. But Lisa was just talking about, and you shared it too, mm. about this, this bread that we get to sustain us for the long journey ahead, that the masses that I do show up to, every mass I leave grateful that I've come because I am reminded mm. that I get to be so close to this God who comes in such an available way, in such a simple way, but it is a miracle within my hands and within my body. Amen. With for the church, yeah. and Saint Therese was is overwhelmed too. Was overwhelmed mm. too by believing that God will, is in the little way, you know, Amen. in simple bread and wine. That's it. That's yeah. beautiful. Like how even the the Eucharist witnesses to us about the little way, about mm -hmm. how Christ is hidden under appearances mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. to normal eyes you cannot see, yeah. but with faith you penetrate to the reality that this is God. Yeah. And that's really beautiful. And so brothers and sisters, we're coming to the end of our show. Thank you so much for joining with us. Please share this link, share this, this episode with all your friends. And please keep plugging into the 33-day journey. You can go to catholictt.org, which is our one-stop shop <laughs> website to find out all the information about our journey and to, to keep on the journey. And if somebody wants to join the journey 10 days in, Two days in, let them join. The main mm -hmm. thing is that we're on this together and we keep speaking about Jesus in the Eucharist, telling people that He is alive and that He's there and He's with us. 
Bless you. Amen.